Big Noon Kickoff presents Bear Bets. I, of course, am your host, Bear, Chris Felica. My co-host again is back with me, Jeff Schwartz. Will, Sammy P will join us a little bit for the uh, the gambling group chat. It, 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 it's This Michigan story is just, it seems it gets weirder and weirder by the day. Yeah. Like, like at first I was like, yeah, okay, they're still in signs, as long as they're not like recording anything. And, all, and then it's like, oh yeah, they're literally sitting yeah. buying tickets to sit across and record things. And now it's like there was maybe like a someone tipped off to hire a private detective to, to it's just a bizarre and Every day who the more. heck knows how it's gonna end. So here's the thing about sign stealing. Sign stealing, just like in baseball. <clears throat> using traditional methods to steal signs, yeah. totally okay. Yeah, exactly. Totally part of the game. I mean, we when I was at Oregon in 2006, we had a bunch of coaches that left in the offseason, went to Cal. Go to Cal, and they knew our signs, our signals. And they the, the defense on the Cal's, in my stance, and Cal's linebacker would be like, play's going right here. He'd point exactly where the play is going, and the play's going right there. <laughs> now, it's our fault for not changing the signs, yep. but that's, that's part of football, right? At Oregon, our defensive coordinator had the same sign for the same zone pressure the entire time I was there. Was it Nick? Nick Aliotti. Love Nick. But I'd be in my stance at practice, and I would look right at the defensive coordinator. <laughs> he would call the pressure, and I'd be like, zone blitz, right here, guys. They're running right here. Like, it, like that's part of the, of, right. of the gamesmanship of the game. And we know there are certain programs right now that have notoriously been very good at the sign stealing, right? They either watch a TV copy. Yep. They have someone, obviously, on the sidelines during the games looking at it, and they match it up. Now, it doesn't always mean that you're going to be successful on the play. It doesn't mean you're always going to win or lose the game, but sign stealing is part of the game. However, when you sort of break that code of in the stands, recording this, the, like that's the kind of the breaking of right. the rules. And I know it's actually a rule, but it's breaking of like the coaching fraternity, right? It's the same with Spygate, right? Spy, you're allowed to steal signs, but then when you on the sidelines recording the other team, you break that fraternity of coaching kind of, you know the, the 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 fraternity of 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 what you're supposed to do as a, as a coach. So, the question for me though is how much does it actually matter to wins and losses? Because that obviously will determine, right. I think, how much we look at Michigan's season this year, last year, the year before that. The one clip that that, that went around was of them uh, of the guy Connor with the defensive coordinator. Ohio State scored in that play though. Like, so how much does it actually matter to the games? I don't have a great answer for you. And I and I argue probably not. I mean, you could have handed Rutgers, Michigan State, any of these teams, Michigan's playbook, and said right. they're going to run this play on this play, and it would have mattered. Which so, is which is why they're buying tickets to go to Georgia games, correct. Alabama games, and they went. And, there was know, an Oregon. They went, yeah. went to an Oregon Washington game. I think uh, maybe the Oregon Washington yep. game. There was some report about about them going to some Pac-12 games. So again, they broke the rules. It's very clear they did this. Like, there's no, Correct. there's no debate of whether. So, for me as a player and just someone who watches the sport, like, how much does it actually matter to them winning and losing? That's what I was going to ask you. Like, the fact that they know a play is coming, and if the play is executed perfectly by the offense, yeah. the fact that they know it's coming, can you stop it? You, you mean, well, you would be put players in the position. Where they're supposed to be. Here's the thing that that I think is not talked about, is that do the do the players know what the plays are going to be? So, for example, in the the clip that we saw, right, Ohio State made 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 a call. Mm -hmm. Michigan then signaled it in their response. Yeah, with, with, the, with the Connor yes, Stallions guy standing right next to the defense coordinator. Right. Do the players know exactly what the play is, or are the coaches just putting them into an optimal defense to stop said play? Because those are two different things, right? Like, if you're a player, you know exactly what is going to happen. You should execute that and be able to stop the opposing team on that on that given play. But if you're just told, okay, they're going to, we're in cover three, it's the best look for what the offense is going to do, you then have to execute as a player, right? Like, like you don't know what's going to happen. So that's, I think, the difference in sort of the nuances of how much does it help a win and lose a game. Right, like, yeah. as I mentioned, like the Cal players, it's our fault we didn't change our signs. They knew exactly the play, so they were like, "The ball's going right here." And guess what? They stopped the play. They knew the ball was going exactly right there, or they knew the protection, right? Or, or think that's no, our fault again for not changing the signs. You know, I knew what we were going to do on defense exactly in practice because we tell the same play all the time, so we should be successful in that play. So I don't know how much like did is is JJ McCarthy standing there 
and if they stole the defensive side, does he know the exact thing they're going to do? I, I don't know, man. Right. I, I don't think I don't think anybody does. Right. And so I think that we'll find that out, I think, as the days come. And then I'll change my opinion on this because right now the question is, well, do you what's a proper punishment? For this season, because next year Harbaugh is going to the NFL. Right. I mean, that, that, that's the end game. We all know how this ends. Like the, the attorneys will Correct. drag it out. And by the time anything happens, he'll, Harbaugh will be in Correct. And, and then Chicago or wherever. Well, Kevin Warren's there. So I don't know. I don't know if he'll be in Chicago. That, that that's that's a very <laughs> interesting it, aside. He'll be he'll be somewhere. So he won't even be punished for this. Um right. and I hope they don't punish the current players that maybe had nothing to do with it, or new coaching staff that might not have anything to do with it. Like that's the problem that's double They punish so late in the process that the players and coaches that weren't part of it get punished. We're going to give you a show cause yeah. or whatever. He's never coming back He's to coming back college football. The, the one, I think the one personally, the sad part for me is like, I really like Michigan. I like watching the oh, that football. Team is great. Um, they've won the Joe Moore award now, two years in a row, a panel that I'm very proud to be part of. Um, and so like, I, I haven't made my mind if it tarnishes the way I feel about Michigan yet. I need to see more information out, but I'm kind of like bum, like uh, Michigan, why, like, why, why, you know, like, I like, I, I feel like this could tarnish what they've done, which absolutely it, it might have to tarnish what they've right. done. Um, so it's just a personal bummer. Like, I'm kind of like, I, I liked you guys. And now you have this scandal above you guys. Yeah, it, it, I don't, it, It's kind of, I think back to, was it 2013, the year Jameis was a freshman and he, Fun, exciting yeah. offense, having fun on the field, the locker room speeches. And then the story comes out about the bad stuff that yeah. he allegedly did off the field. And it was like, really? Yeah. And like Cam Newton as well in 2010. It's like, it's funny. I had a oh, great Cam, Auburn up. Yeah. Best, like, oh, yeah. He stole a laptop or threw it out yeah. the window. And then his dad's taking money for it. And it's like, really? It was funny. I had a, uh, a former colleague at ESPN who used to be a news editor. And, uh, I remember we were driving to Alabama. We were going from Birmingham to Tuscaloosa. Yeah, I've done that when before. The, when, yeah. the, when the Jameis story was like... The go, crab leg and, one? And, No, not the crab leg. Okay. The, the, okay, yeah. yeah, the other one. Yeah. And and I just remember her, Bill, and she was... She used to talk like a, a longshoreman. It was yeah. great. I, lo I, I loved her. And she's just dropping it. At, you can never trust any of the boop, 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 boop. And like, she's just, like, she was like, just so jaded. Like, I guess to me like, oh, it's a great story. It's fun. It's I know. And that, then it's what, like, ugh. I know. That's what I feel about Michigan. A little now, bit. It's like, are we naive enough to think that Michigan is the only team no. doing this? Well, so, maybe, maybe this operation. Well, that's the thing. It's like, so how many teams are going to the opposing sidelines to film them? Obviously, Michigan was doing it. They put the tickets under his name, which is just ridiculously she stupid. Well, so here's and also a thing too is that if if he, if if he was buying all these tickets, like his salary is public. It's not a lot of money. I mean, he who's paying for this operation, not right? Him. Which not him. <laughs> so obviously, in, and there are people that really believe that Harbaugh had nothing to do with this. Like there are people out there that firmly believe that like he just he he didn't. Well, it would be plausible deniability. Plausible deniability on this one. So. But Harbaugh's going to be gone. He's not going to be Michigan next season. No. And, and, and and I think also, too, what, like, stinks is, like, Sharon Moore, who's offensive line coach, who coached one of the games this year, like, he's next up for that job, I feel like. And now it's it might be... Well, like, yeah, you got to disassociate yourself from with, that. With yeah. everyone. Like, you have to get every, get rid of everyone. Um, I, I Kalen DeBoer might be the answer for them, at, if that ends up happening, by the way. I feel like that's... Sorry for Washington fans, but I feel like... I, I've been... That's his... Interesting. Yeah. That's his... I've been... I was reading some, some message boards. I love college world message boards oh yeah they're, they're the best I, I, I think i saw one which said like kalen DeBoer is a his dream job has always been michigan so yeah i, I would hate that as an oregon fan I, I will say this though the message board stuff with, with this has been amazing because it, it was that tennis it was that it was a tennessee, tennessee site yeah. the, that had this like a year ago <laughs> I, I, I did not get into message boards a couple years ago oh, until a buddy, oh. of mine, a buddy of mine got me into recruiting. So that's why I started Tiger doing Tiger droppings. The board. LSU board is but great. This, I will say a pleasure of mine this past weekend was uh, Sunday morning. I made myself a coffee. The kids were quiet. And I opened up the USC message board. I was drinking my coffee. <laughs> just, oh, the USC message board was, oh, message boards are great. Just do it, guys. If you're a college football fan, go to the message board. I don't, I don't, I don't write nothing. Just read everything. Oh, it's, it's, it's a lot of fun. Well, I mean, the message board geniuses. That, oh, well, that, that, account, that, that is, account is, is fantastic. Is, is great. Well, let's get to some wagers for this week. We have uh, Bears bets now. Then we'll have our best bets at the end of the show after gambling group chat. Let's start off in an ACC matchup for your first wager of the week. Clemson is at North Carolina State. North Carolina State is plus 10. The total 
is 44. Clemson is 4 and 3. They lost to Miami last weekend 28 yes, did. to 20. Uh, they, they've only covered two other seven games so far this season. NC State is 4 and 3. They're also 2 and 5 against the spread. NC State's off a bye. They lost last to Duke uh 24 to 3 in their last game. Bear, what do you got here? I'm looking at the NC State team total under 16 and a half. Now I am banking on the fact that Clemson is not going to throw in the towel here after giving that game away in South Florida last week against Miami's backup quarterback and losing that under and losing the Miami team total under was part of a very, very bad evening for me uh, last week. Um, Happy my alma mater won, but not happy that I was. How about Kate Klubnick just deciding to keep the ball for himself in that play? Like you can do that. If you score a touchdown, like for example, I know I very Oregon centric at times, but you know, Bucky Irving's long touchdown run mm-hmm. against Washington state. That was him doing his own thing, but he scored a touchdown. Right. Like you can do that. If you score a touchdown, you can't pull a ball right. like that and not score a touchdown right. like that. You, that's just you, bad football. You, you, you just put, give yourself the best opportunity to score. Yeah. But like NC state, you go, you go back to that. Like the offensive showing against Duke was, is, is abysmal. You thought maybe yeah. that Marshall game, with, with MJ Morris at quarterback, maybe there were some signs. But if you look at their their ACC play, ten against Louisville, three against Duke, yeah. it slid by Virginia twenty four twenty one. Like I'm ba- I'm banking on Dabo being able to rally them. Hey, we keep be proud Clemson be, be, be program. Keep it going. Like you win out the regular season, you yeah. win a bowl game you'll win 10 games again, despite everything is up. I I think that that's going to be kind of like the rallying cry. Now we'll see if Clemson a is talented enough to do it and B if if those players on defense are invested, but that defense is still really good. So I'm going to go under 16 and a half here for a Wolfpack team total. A note here, NC state is 98th in the country right now points per drive at offense. And as you mentioned, the the last two defenses that are comparable to Clemson, three points to 10 points. So uh, I'm with you here. Next game here, we're going to the the Big 12, a new Big 12 team, BYU at Texas. Texas is a 17.5 point favor. The total uh, is 15.5. BYU, BYU is 5-2. and two. They're 2-2 two two in the Big 12. They just beat Texas Tech 27-14. Uh, to 14. They're 3-4 and four against the spread this season. Texas is 6-1. and one. They squeezed by Houston last weekend on the road, and Texas is 3-4 and four against the spread this season. They're also without their starting quarterback. Yeah, I don't think Ewers being out is a massive deal. Yeah. Uh, this week, I, I I think Malik Murphy will be just fine. I think the coaches are very confident in him. I think maybe they have maybe have a couple of other injuries, uh, much that are more minor compared to yours. But I, I think yours short term, if he's out, I think they're going to be okay uh, with Murphy. And, and I think the defense will take it upon themselves to to really carry this team. Like, like they got a twenty one nothing last week on yeah. Houston right out of the gate, and I think they're probably okay. This game's over, and then tone of the game changed. Yeah. Um, so, so, so I, I think they'll get up again. I don't think that they will fall asleep on the lead. I think the defense uh, will play well. I think the offense will run the ball very, very well. But M- M- Murphy has a cannon. I don't think they'll maybe will be his up-tempo or whatever. Yeah. But at, at, at the same time, I think that receiver play, the running game. And, and BYU, B- BYU, when they went on the road to TCU a couple weeks ago, they lost like 44-10 or whatever it was. So, like, and that's not a very good TCU no. team at all. So, I, I think defensively, uh, this is going to be a very bad matchup for, for BYU here. Worth noting, BYU's offense has a third and out and over a third of their drives, which is not good. No. Especially against a good Texas team, and they're near the bottom of the sport and exposed to play rate. You just can't – you can't – have a lot of three and outs and then not be able to push the ball right. down the field if you're BYU. Uh, so I, I think this is low scoring, right? But probably somewhere mm-hmm. in the 31 to six range, something like that. I imagine. That, right? That, yeah. that yeah. seems logical. Yeah. Um, all right. Next up, a big matchup of the SEC, yes. Florida, Georgia, Georgia favored by 14 and a half total is 47 and a half. Feels a tad low for this game. Florida is five and two, two straight conference wins are three and four against the spread. Georgia is seven. Oh, as we know, they've only covered a single game this season. However, that was the game they wanted to win the most was the, was mm-hmm. the Kentucky game. Where are you going here? Well, we all knew Florida would be controlling its destiny to get to the SEC title game at this <laughs> yes. point in the year, especially <laughs> after, you know, I was going to say, especially after looking so good in Salt Lake on the uh, the opening night of the season. But I laid the points here with Georgia. Uh, you hit on it. Like the game against Kentucky, everybody was like down on Georgia. Are they really number one? Um, Kentucky's defense, Devin Leary. They, this is an opportunity where I think Georgia could be uh, on upset alert, and they came out and played uh, their best game of yep. the year. Uh, it's the first game that they'll play full 
uh, since the Brock Bowers injury. And, and, and Kirby Smart hit on this earlier in the year. Like people were calling for, why isn't Brock getting the ball more? And Kirby came out and basically said, like, when the injury happened now, like, this, that was by design early in the year to get some of the other players involved. That way, if we were in a situation where we needed someone else to make a yeah. player, we didn't have, like, these guys are prepared. Now, now they're prepared, they're ready, they have experience, and sure, you don't want to be without your your best player and biggest offensive threat. But 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 I think what, what went on earlier in the year now, their offense will be better. Beck is improving uh, week by week, and I, I just have no no faith in that in that Florida defense yeah. at all. We, we we've seen South Carolina put up a bunch of points. I, I think Georgia could put up a big number. I think what the last two years have been forty two twenty yeah. thirty four seven. Like uh, the, the the talent gap is still there. The Kentucky game plan against Florida is what Georgia's going to do. They're going to run the football, right? Yeah. And and they're going to protect Carson Beck as best they can. Uh, they've had it now a couple of weeks to, to get ready without Bowers there, right? So they can, I think, I'll formulate a, a game plan to to get going here. But I go back to the point I made about Georgia and Kentucky. Like, when Georgia, the last couple of years, has wanted to, to win the game. Like, when they've tried their heart, they beat everyone's ass, and they've beaten them by a lot. And uh, suspect Florida offensive line at times as well. Now, Georgia doesn't have a big sack, which they didn't have last year as well. No. They, they still pressure the quarterback, though. The defense is not made to get a bunch of sacks. It's, it's, it's an interesting thought when people think about their their defense it's so good but not made to get sacks right, right? It's, 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 but it's not it's not made that way so um all right those are three bets for now let's recap where bear is standing he has nc state team total under 16 and a half they are hosting clemson he has texas hosting uh byu but favored by 17 and a half he'll lay the points with texas there and the last one we just talked about Georgia minus 14 and a half in the world's largest land. outdoor tailgate land now. North, they, no, n- n- land north of two touchdowns. Two it, is it, it, it's not world's cocktail party anymore, right? It's like world's biggest yeah, tailgate. Outdoor tailgate, yeah. In Jacksonville, right? Yes. In Jacksonville. All right. Let's get to the gambling group chat. A lot of fun as usual. It's Bear, it's Sammy, it's Will Hill, and myself. Take a listen to that. Gambling group chat is back with myself, Jeff, Sammy P, and Will Hill. Uh, usually we like to talk about games that are taking place this week. I want to start with just with something kind of big picture, the biggest story in college football right now seems to be this Michigan sign stealing, cheating, allegation story, whatever you want to call it. And I just wonder is someone who has a JJ McCarthy Heisman ticket I myself and I know Sammy P you are as well. Are you a little concerned that there might be a little bit of a residual here amongst voters that maybe they may shun McCarthy or shun Michigan? For some of these postseason awards because of what's being alleged? Not in the slightest. I would make it minus 5,000 that this gets solved before the national championship. You know what I mean? I mean, this is something that will drag on for months. I don't think the voters are going to do that. I think the voters are more inclined to wait for the official results because they are journalists, and then they'll, you know, go ahead and rewind and ransack the program and ban whatever going forward but I, I mean i don't know well about you i i feel like this thing is going to bleed out for months um at michigan and then by that point we'll already have our mccarthy cash bear or our penix cash or whatever and then good luck coming to my house to pry it from my cold dead hands <laughs> yeah i think if there's any implications that to me the most interesting thing is like next year if there if there's sanctions against michigan does this chase harbaugh away where he's like oh, i'm not going to deal with it you know if, say there's a ban or something i'll just go to the nfl for the final you know three five years of my career that's that's what interests me i, I i'm with sammy i don't think there's any sort of betting implication where people hold this against mccarthy i don't think that would be fair i don't think that happens I think it won't happen because we don't know how much this actually affects their winning and losing. I mean, they could have given Michigan State their entire playbook. It wouldn't matter last weekend, right? I mean, they're kicking everyone's ass. So to me, they won't hold it against them because it doesn't seem to matter very much. And again, I mean, even as a former player, I don't know how much it actually helped them win and lose. I mean, the, the one clip that made its, its way on social media, Ohio State scored on the exact on that play. So, like, how much did they actually know about what Ohio State was going to do? So, uh, to me, it's not going to hurt him very much. I think if he's the clear winner, he'll win. Maybe, look, maybe if it's very, very close, you're deciding between Michael Penix and McCarthy, you take that into consideration. I, I, I wouldn't do it if I was a Heisman voter. Um, but I think because you can't prove it actually really helped them win games, at least not now, I don't think it'll hurt him. Well, I hope I hope you're right because you never really know what's going through the mind of some of these people and some of the the grudges they may held hold against certain teams, certain coaches, whomever. Uh, 
Sammy giving journalists maybe far too much respect than they <laughs> they, might, they might deserve with some Aren't of the Aren't we thing. technically journalists a little bit? No. no. Well, you and I are not journalists. No, we're not. We're but I, a, I remember who, who, who was it that I had a conversation with that – you, I, that I used to work with, who was a coach, who like, like someone told him that he's now a journalist, and he's like, "No, I'm not. I'm not a journalist. We're, we're opinionists, right? We yes, exactly. Opinionists. Yes. Yeah, we're we're, we're, co- we're content creators. They were content creators. <laughs> well, well, the content that was created in, or I, I guess, at Pinnacle uh, on Sunday, and now with the betters throughout the, the the country, this Oregon line makes no sense. Six up to six and a half now. Do people remember what has happened? The last couple of times Oregon has played Utah, it is, I know, previous regime, previous administration, but uh, it has not been pretty. Utah has absolutely run a rough shot over the Ducks. And I, I don't know, is it the fact that maybe some betters were hanging on for hope that maybe Keithy or Cam Rising were going to play? And that's why the, the Utah numbers have kind of been a little shorter. But like, isn't this number at six and a half, Jeff? Like, there's no way you can lay six and a half, can you? Absolutely not. No. Um, now, as an Oregon fan, I'm not betting Utah plus six and a half. I think it's very odd to root for your team to only win by a certain number of points. So I'm not doing that. But to me, guys, the under is certainly in play here. The first five games, Utah had 15 explosive plays on offense. That's it. Since then, they've had 14. So they've been better the last two weeks. But the last two opponents they played on defense are terrible. Cal and, and USC, they're playing a real defense again. So I don't think they're going to score very much here. Oregon will shut down Vaki, shut down the rushing game. No respect for what Barnes can do as a passer. But on the flip side, guys, Oregon's offense is number one in the country points per drive. They're very good. They're not as good on the road. They're having some issues on third and short, having some issues in the red zone, obviously on fourth down. And what Utah, uh, what Utah can do defensively to me, guys, um, can really shut down Oregon. I, I am, I'm picking Oregon to win, obviously, because I'm an Oregon fan, but I don't feel comfortable doing that. To me, the play is the under here. I'm not sure this gets to even 40 points. I could see a 2017 game, same as last season, a 17-14 game, a 17-13 game. I just don't think we're going to see a lot of points this weekend in Salt Lake City. Yeah, it looked like weather might be a factor. It looked like it would be like 30s, wintry mix. I just checked the weather. It's high of 47. It's a noon local kickoff, so it, it'll be chilly, but I don't think the weather is anything to factor into your handicap. I mean, we know Utah's MO. They're, they're tough. They're good on defense. They're tough at home. I don't know if they're as great on defense this year as they've been in past years. Uh, you worry about them. You know, if they get behind, pass protection, I think, is an issue. But uh, uh, to me, it's Utah or nothing. Um, I, I mentioned last week against USC, Utah's a good live betting team because if they ever got behind 10 points, two scores or whatever, they're in trouble because that's just not their game. That's not, not their MO to, to play from behind. But to me, Utah will be right in this game. I actually just wrote down Utah plus six and a half and circled it for two reasons. Number one, Bear said you can't <laughs> bet it. And number two, Jeff said, I like Oregon to win, but not cover. Or I'm not going to lay the points. So that like... My sirens went off. Like that's <laughs> there probably you go. I love it. Yeah, the contrarian play of the week. I mean, look, if I was a bookmaker here in Massachusetts and I wrote a hundred bets on this game, how many would I write on Utah? 25, 30. I mean, 80? the house is clear of the Utes. If the Utes went out right, it'd be outstanding for the house, but I don't I'm not there. I wish Utah had a quarterback. Um, I'm gonna tail Jeff. I think that that move on the under is real. Obviously, it opened 49. And we're seeing 48, 47 and a half. There's a couple 47s. So the wise guys have already spoken on the under. And if you're going to bet that, a lot like what we talked about last week when we said, look, Ohio State, Michigan, or I'm sorry, Ohio State, Penn State, bet under 47. It's going to close lower. And it closed 45, 45 and a half. I would still bet under right now at 47 and a half, 48, before it gets through that very keen number of 47. Well, when you open that bookmaking industry in Massachusetts, let me know. I'll drive across north across the border to uh, to, to to help you out there. Maybe have another available out for me, uh, being that my outs are so limited right now. I'm just looking show? down you the. Can say that, huh? I can't say that. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Why not? Huh? Huh? I'm not. I'm not really serious. I'm not, like I'm really gonna go across state lines and make it make a uh, a, a way. Oh. Come on, come on. That would never happen. Like I'm serious. Like I'm serious about this. <laughs> I'm trying to make a make a light make a light of something about the uh, the current state of sports wagering throughout this country and the different rules that you can bet, can't bet, and states you can do it or whatever. Just 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 legalize it, right? Isn't, isn't, it's, it's wasn't wasn't there a song soon. about that? Legalize about, it. Yeah, I'm, it's coming to North Carolina soon. I'm very excited. good for you. I know. I can't wait. Anyway, you're looking at all these national title contenders. Kind of away from home this week. Oklahoma on the road at Kill You on, on the road at Kansas. Ohio State on the road at Wisconsin. Georgia, the neutral site game uh, against Florida. Florida State on the road against 
Sammy P's favorite team, Wake, uh, UW on the road at Stanford. Uh, any any of these uh, any of these teams you think in trouble this week? Will I, I, I think I know there's one that I, there's one here that I think you do particularly like. Might not be a true road game, but I think there's one one double digit dog here you do like, right? Yeah, there's a couple. I mean, I, I you talked about Oklahoma a few weeks ago, and and you said you talked to some people in college football, and they felt Oklahoma, despite the stats uh, defensively, they're not as good as the stats. Um, that's kind of where I'm at. Look, I'm, I'm sure they'll move the ball in Kansas. Everybody moves the ball in Kansas. But uh, even if Daniels doesn't play, I think Kansas will move the ball in them. It's off the key number of 10. You're seeing mostly nine, nine and a half. But to me, that would still be, uh, uh, you know, Kansas or nothing. I think that'll be a tight game. I just think Oklahoma, a little overrated. Very lucky to get out of that game last week against UCF. And I like Florida. It's not pretty, but plus 14 and a half. I just... I haven't loved this Georgia offense all year. I love it even less without Bowers. I think Florida will probably have a good game plan here and to run the ball, shorten the game. Uh, Napier's been good as a dog. That's a lot of points, 14 and a half. I think you're oppo with me here. I think you like Georgia. I'm surprised. I Florida's am. that ugly side where nobody wants to bet Florida. And like Sammy said, if you're writing 100 tickets, you're writing a whole bunch of Georgia ones. But you know these top five teams laying huge numbers have not done well this season, especially with the new clock rule. So I like the Gators here. Yeah, I, I think the the fact why I like Georgia is it, we saw a couple of weeks ago when they were kind of doubted against Kentucky. People thought they might be in trouble. Is Georgia number one? They, they responded w- with their best win of the regular season and completely blew out Kentucky. And, and and I think here, I just I just don't know about that Florida defense. I know they put they 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 came back and beat South Carolina, but that deep South Carolina defense is bad. Uh, they're all South Carolina's offensive line is like, I think that that was just going to be one of those high scoring back and forth type games. So I think George will show last two years. I think it's been like 70, 74 to 20. It's something ridiculous. They've been two absolute blowouts. So I think with the week off after the Bowers injury, I think as I was, I was talking with Jeff earlier, I think, uh, I think UGA will be good here. Uh, Sammy, any of those big favorites uh, may be in trouble this week. You think? I don't know about in trouble. I just, boys, I wish I could take Wisconsin against uh, Ohio State. I mean, so, so do I. I'm going to hang a 14 and a half in my face in Camp Randall where they're going to be jumping around like maniacs. I wish I could, but with Mordecai, the quarterback out, my issue is I don't know how much Wisconsin is going to score. Like, can they get to 17? If they can, they can cover. Mm. That could be 31 17. You cover by the hook, but I'm just. I'm terrified going up against this Ohio State defense that looked unbelievable again last week. I mean, we talk about can the quarterback play? Is Harrison good enough to win the Heisman? Who's running the ball? And then we ignore Ohio State's defense shutting down basically everybody all season, including Penn State. Um, But I'm going to ride with Kansas here. Um, We don't think Daniels is going to play the quarterback. He's got a back thing, and there's rumblings that – he might just want to hold out and maybe come back next year when there are, <clears throat> are a lot less quarterbacks going in the first couple of rounds. <laughs> so maybe that's something to pay attention to. But Bean can move the ball. And as we've talked about on Bear Bets, Lance Leipold is one of the best coaches in the country at manipulating safeties. They all, if you, Every time you watch a Kansas game film, they hit the home run right down the middle of the field because the play action and the manipulation of the safeties is so good. I would take, you know, there are some stale tens you could take uh, but that should be a close game. And look, I would not be surprised at all if Kansas won that game outright. I would caution everyone uh, wagering on Stanford this weekend. I feel like when you look at what, how Washington played last weekend, people are going to go look at Stanford and say, hey, Stanford, they beat Colorado two weeks ago. They can come back and, and do it again to Washington. Obviously, they're not in the same category. Stanford's played three ranked teams this year. They lost 56-10, 42-6, and 42-7. I would good. It's, it's not good. It's not good, Bear. I, I would actually be comfortable laying the 26 with Washington on the road, which I know is a big number. But in the Pac-12 conference since 2011, road favorite to 24 points or more have covered nine to 12 games. Like if you're bad, you're bad. Stanford's not very good. I just would advise putting money on Stanford this weekend, which I think people might do come Saturday. Oh, look, there's a Pac-12 game, a, b- a bunch of points for Stanford. They just beat Colorado two weeks ago. Washington looked bad against Washington uh, against Arizona State. I, I would just caution people on, on putting money on Stanford this weekend. Number of Stanford fans that are uh, in the in the stands for that game. Oh, it's a, so it's a four thirty local kick. I think uh, seventeen. Yeah, seventeen it, Stanford it, fans. It, yeah. it, it, it was amazing when we would do games there to to cover them. Just a beautiful setting, beautiful great campus, stadium. great little stadium, and it was just empty. All Oregon like, fans. Like, like it was so. Oregon. 
I, I just sat. I'm like, why? I'm like, why is like David Shaw like still here? Like, how how, how, are, how are they getting all Bryce Love and all these like great defensive Jim Hyde? No one goes to these games. It, it was it was terrible. Speaking of fans, we, we sell out at the Rose Bowl, Jeff, we, for for Colorado. <laughs> this this storyline is so silly. Okay, <laughs> the Rose Bowl. I've been to 50 games there. Okay, my parents had seen tickets as a kid. I went to every game every year. Big Bruin fan. Okay. The Rose Bowl seats like 90,000 fans. What UCLA has done is they've tarped off a third of the stadium, okay? And they have about 50-ish thousand fans, so more than a third, for all their home games. They took one tarp off, guys, and called it a sellout for Colorado. So I don't know if it's a sellout. More people than usual will be there. And I don't know about you guys. I think UCLA covers a spread. UCLA's defense, we go back to this a lot, is really, really good. It's fantastic. And they're going to pressure Colorado. They're going to make hard, life hard for that offense. And UCLA made a quarterback change last weekend. They sat Dante Moore, which they had to do. He wasn't playing well. And the offense got back to being efficient, to running the football, to doing what, what, what uh, Chip Kelly does. And unlike USC, and unlike you know teams that play, they're going to run the football in the second half of this game. If they're up big, they're going to run the football, run the football, run the football. Um, I think the Bruins cover this, this big number, guys. What do you guys think? I just miss the days. I, I don't know if we can have a moment of silence for the days when Colorado was a double digit favorite and we could bet against them because those games are obviously <laughs> over, which is unfortunate. Yeah, it, it, I, I like against the national that. championship runner up last year, TCU, right? Right. Let's pump that no, TCU saying, win that, some more. You know, is that the most misleading loss of the entire season? I mean, did we, I don't know if we talked about this last week, but that game still makes no sense. Like the line makes no sense, the result makes no sense. And I think. It sort of got all those little Colorado fans, and yes, I said little Colorado fans because they're all little, um, and made them all extra tall when they beat TCU. And then, you know, Nebraska sucked, and, you know, Colorado State should have won, and then they get drilled by Oregon. Like, that opening game loss was one of the most confusing and misleading results to me of the season. Like, it still doesn't make sense, any of it. Probably going to be the difference between them going over the three and a half and, and under the three and a half too. people that bet the season wins because I, I don't see another win here. But yeah, I think you silly rolls here. Bear, can we lay points with your guy Lincoln Riley this week or what? I mean, is he does he still have the sniffles? <laughs> I, I was going to say, I hope he's feeling better for sure. I, I, I know he's back at practice. He's back at practice now. Yeah, 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 I know it's the coach's yeah. show and the and the and it's. Boy, I, he, Wilcox is a is a home dog though. Is uh, they're bad though. Is a wager to make. Yeah, they're they're, they're, they're much bad. worse than usual. But USC is not good. Like I, I I know there's a lot of talk about defensively, and they certainly have issues there. But offensively, they're not the same team they were last year. Their offensive line is not good. Mm -mm. They're not running the football enough, which is crazy. Lloyd averaged 12 yards a carry against Utah and got seven freaking rushes. Um, Caleb Williams is not playing as well. It's not really his fault. The offense has nobody open. This screams like, and I hate wedging over all the time on some of these games, but I mean, this is going to be, I think, a lot of points scored in this game, right? Yeah, I, I would think so. You, like, you you see the the stories out there, like, with, I mean, what way is it? Is there, there, there is. The favorite scenario is going to be them finishing seven and five. Like I say, should win this week. And then they got UW, Oregon, and UCLA the rest of the day. Like seven and five is on the table here. Like we, we get the sense this might be a, uh, we, we, you said Lincoln's name. Like he might, you think he might be done after this year in, in LA? Are you, um, the NFL comes calling. Do, do, do you think the NFL? A, will come calling for him? B, do you yeah. think he wants to go to the NFL? Well, when asked about it, he hasn't said no, right? He's talked about the advantages of the schedule in the NFL. But I think anyone hires in the NFL, they're going to have to say, hey, man, like, you're not bringing Alex Grinch with you, right? Like, you're going to have to hire someone else <laughs> to be the defensive coordinator. Um, and, you know, maybe Mike McCarthy gets axed at Dallas and Jerry Jones comes calling. I mean, is Mark Davis going to call from Vegas? Are the, are the Bears going to need a new coach? Are they going to go with Riley and draft Caleb Williams. I, I don't know, but I think he's definitely going to take the phone calls. It doesn't mean he's going to leave, but I uh, think the vibes are off at USC right now, guys. It's not, it's not well right now. Things are not going well. Um, and as you mentioned, like they have enough games coming up where eight and four, seven to five is still on the table. Are they going to quit offensively though? Like that's my, th like they might quit defensively, mm -hmm. but they scored, you know, a good amount of points against Utah. They scored 30 plus. And, you know, California, to Bear's point earlier, I think we all were on uh, Cal when they were getting nine at home 
against Oregon State. They scored 40 and didn't cover. Blown out. You know how hard that is to score 40 and yeah. not cover nine? <laughs> Unbelievable. Um, but I made the game, I made the game 45-31. That's you know, in the mm. mid seventies and the total is in the high sixties. So I, I might just, rather than lay 10 and a half, I guess I'll just go over 67 and a half. Yeah, that, Are that, we that sure Caleb Williams like is the number one pick here? Sure. No, we're not. Well, so that's why he's got, I'm so you know, there was a suggestion obviously that he sits this year. It, it, you know, there was a suggestion obviously that he'd not play the rest of the season. I, I disagree with that suggestion, but part of it, the reason I disagree with it is that he's a competitor. I, there's no doubt who Caleb Williams is as a competitor. Like he, he is, everything that everyone wants out of him. But he has to continue to play well to, to be drafted number one. I know one or two might not matter to the rest of us. I mean, the money is the money, the status is the status, but being drafted number one overall is, is pretty awesome. And if he continues to not play this one, again, I don't think it's his fault because the offense is broken. There are just no easy passes. Like if you ever watch him play and think, oh, there's an easy pass, it's not the offense for some reason. And so he's got to continue to play well to not let Drake may pass him. Uh, it, it's that simple. So I think that um, you talk about the motivation offensively. Do they quit? Do they not? Caleb Williams won't quit. He's going to continue to play hard because his draft, I think his draft stock needs him to play well. Hey, hey, Sammy, have you seen anywhere out there that has these number one pick in the draft props out there? Because I've been, I mean, every week when I go on the road and, and have access to looking at lines in different state sports books, I haven't seen any. Like, like it's, I would love to bet Drake May just, it, it, like, at a good number. I don't want to just say I'm going to bet him and then he, I see he's two to one or whatever. But like, I think there's a very, very, very good chance that Drake May goes number one in the draft. Have, you, have we seen this well, market think, out, well, any, out there anywhere? No, I think the books are basically telling you they're scared without telling you officially because these markets have come down. I remember about a month ago, Caleb Williams was minus five, six dollars to go first overall. And now the market's evaporated. And what that tells you as a better is that they don't know anymore who's going one. Like there's a lot more concern of the liabilities that could build on the other guys, on the Drake Mays. Not that Marvin Harrison goes number one overall, but, you know, Caleb to the eyes of the books was a lock to have him minus 500 in late September and minus 600. But to have that market go from a minus $5 favorite to off the board is just fear that it's no longer going to be Caleb Williams. I am seeing Caleb Williams minus 300, Drake May plus 350, but this is at faraway places that might not have limits that are, you know, really worth betting. Um, I'll just say this, though. February, March, when we have no sports to talk about, uh, Super Bowl's over. This is going to be a real conversation for a long time. This will be yep. a look because there, there's nothing else going on. May May's going to be a good pro, I think. So uh, I don't know. I'm looking at these odds now. I know Sammy would probably bet Shadur Sanders 66 to 1, but I think May yep. plus 350 would be an interesting bet. <laughs> Let's start that rumor right now, Sammy. We're going to Dion and Shadur to the Bears because the Bears are going to be looking for a new coach. Play me my theme music. Even though I think, even though I think my theme music right now is that Olivia Rodrigo song, which I that commercial, that Apple commercial seems to come on like every during the. What, what's the name of that song, Will? I, I know, I know you. Uh, you've been watching the, a lot of the baseball too and seeing that commercial a lot. That one I don't know. I've seen the commercial like you said it's every you can't watch uh you know any of these games without a commercial with Ken Griffey Jr., Olivia Rodrigo or Travis Kelsey. They're basically every single commercial, but I do not know the name of the song, but uh getting back to May, what number would you need on May Bear? Like what number is like all right, this this is where I'll fire, this is where I won't. 3 3 and a half to 1. I take 3 and a half to 1. Okay. I would too. If you if if you tell if you tell me where that far away place is, I can go catch a flight during the uh during the uh, during the uh, the idle week or the time in between the bowl game and the uh, the regular season, go catch a flight and make a make a wager and fly back. Yeah, it's a good number. Yeah, the three three and a half to one. I I, I would certainly take. But I'm, I'm looking at some other. That just feels like a very uh, nondescript kind of slate here. You know, it, <clears throat> Mississippi State Auburn. I look at wow, that just two all four. There's a 43 out there at South Point with a total of 40. Mississippi State and Auburn are going to combine for 43 points. Mm. I head head on out and see my guy Chris Andrews at South Point and give him a little business. 41 and a half everywhere else. Um, I'm just looking for some other games here to potentially talk about with you guys that that might that might, that might have some interest. Uh, what about Texas? No, you're in Texas. Yeah, 
No Ewers for Texas. I don't know how much it mattered. I actually like Texas uh, in the game, and I was talking about that earlier with Jeff. I, I think Malik Murphy has is, is got a huge arm. I think they feel pretty comfortable with him. And I think after getting up what 21 nothing right out of the gate last week and then falling asleep on the lead, I don't think they'll do that again. I think they'll get up big in this game, and, and I think they'll, th they'll, they'll throttle BYU. Uh, BYU. As I said, this is a BYU team I think that lost – 45-11, I think it was, at TCU. Uh, th this is not a very good team. And we've seen, and now the, the last week was an anomaly with Houston uh, nearly upsetting Texas, but the, the newbies in the Big 12 have not fared very well against the old guard. So I laid the 17 and a half with Texas. Did you, did you like BYU, uh, Sammy? No, I was under 50. I, I don't know that we're going to get them pushing the tempo with Murphy. I, I like a lot of what Texas's quarterback room has with Murphy, and obviously everybody's fawning over the thought of maybe Arch Manning getting some run here in a blowout. We'll see. I just I feel like this is a sleepy spot for Texas, um, you know, like a 37-6 final or something like that. Wouldn't be surprised. I'll take I that. Like it under 50. I like it under 50 for sure. Will, anything on, on, on USC Texas, or is there something else out there that we uh, may have missed that's striking your fancy? I, I've kind of liked these Arizona teams. I think Jeff and I are both on Arizona here. Arizona's been one of the more underrated teams. You know, they have three losses. They're all coin flip losses. Washington, USC, Mississippi State, all games they could have won. Getting three and a half against Oregon State. Uh, I think Jeff likes them to win. I, I definitely like them to cover here, plus the three and a half. And uh, Arizona State's been my one of the, you know one of these little weird pet teams where you know I think early in the year um, they, they just had so many turnovers where it skewed their stats but they've been fight these a dog they really could have should have won last week against Washington so getting six this week I think is uh is a good bet against Washington State so you know, an, an Arizona Arizona State money line parlay six to one if you want to really get adventurous but I like both the Arizona teams plus the points here. Mm. I, I think Arizona State, if if I'm right, has covered against USC. They covered Colorado. They covered Washington. Uh, so they've been they've been yeah. a covering machine uh, out west so far this year in in, in the conference games. I've mean, I been mean, missing one other game that they covered. Yeah, so. uh, uh, USC, Cal, Colorado, Washington. Yeah, they covered all those. U yeah. USC was a 14 point game, but they were probably a 30 point dog in that game. 21. Yeah, 30, I, I, I'm looking back at their schedule. I, I, first I remember I actually had them against Oklahoma State when they were just inept on offense and incapable of doing anything. That's, and and stop there that they are inept on offense and capable of doing anything. And, and, and then the then the following week after like seeing them again, I was like, I'm just Fresno State. I think was, Fresno State might have been your best bet that week. I I don't know, but they it was one of my favorites. Yeah, Fresno State beat them 29 nothing. They scored, had eight turnovers. Yeah, not great. The, the I love when six the to one money line probably from Will five weeks ago. Bears like, oh, the line was 30. <laughs> Will's like, no, it's 25 and a half. Whatever. It was 35 whatever and a half was, that game. Like, it was 21 for the I, I had USC Fred first half minus 21. Ago. So I remember. Right. <laughs> yeah. This this is our life. This is what we do. This, this this is what we do. We we sit here and we think about the horrible beats and the and, and the and the wins that should should have been but weren't. And and, and rehash all this stuff. Life, life is a degenerate. It's, it, it's is a wonderful Tennessee thing. gonna gonna cover in Kentucky? I, I have no feel for either of these teams. I don't either. I mean, they want they they beat him by they beat Kentucky by like what ninety last year. Like Mark, Mark, I'm sure will be wound up after making the comments that he did a couple of weeks ago about Georgia looking for revenge. I got nothing on. I got nothing on Kentucky. Maybe under might might be the play there. And, Will, Sammy, anything on Kentucky, Tennessee? Under, if it's yeah. it put, put me. Up. I mean, how about Milton on the road? I don't, I don't know if I trust that. I don't know if they can run the ball. So to me, I, I think Kentucky is worth a look. And, you know, you mentioned looking back at the season. I'm looking ahead at the season, just looking at some of these teams after this week. Some of these teams have three, four games left. It's like, man, where, where does the season go? We're almost, you know, yeah. a month left. We're almost to the finish line. So we got to uh, savor these last few games here. It goes by so fast. It's amazing. Are there any? Uh, you just just looking at the, like like the slate here. You're talking about the season going by fast. Like which which, which of these one loss teams do you think might be worth a, worth a play on the uh, to, to win the national Tigers? You got Texas six to one. You got Oregon at six to one. Not six to one. Six, six and one. But Texas is six and one. Oregon six and one. Alabama is seven and one. Penn State six and one. Utah is six and one. Like. I actually made a bet on Oregon last week, Jeff. Sorry, thirty-five to one to win the national title. You just mushed them for this week. Thanks. I know, I know, I know, I know, I did. But uh, any anybody out there li like? 
I mean, it has to be zombie Alabama, right? If, if Alabama continues to just get better each week on offense, Milrow gets more comfortable in the pocket, starts making more routine throws. He's very good at, at the home run throw. We know that. But just getting more routine throws. They have LSU coming up. I believe it's in next week or the week next after. Week, next week. Next week. Um, and if they beat LSU, they're going to play Georgia in the SEC Championship game, most likely. Beat Georgia, they're right. I mean, they're in the playoff, yep, right? Like, exactly. They're, like, they're right there. I think we've kind of forgotten that Alabama – Again, offensively, if they sort of get this more consistency out of their their quarterback, their offensive line, they're getting a little bit better each week. So to me, it'd be Alabama, who I think it uh, can win the championship here, who's a one-loss team. Oregon's the one. Sammy, uh, anything Oregon's on it? I, I think three of the last four games at Don't home, they have the most. You can't call it a good loss. Nothing's a good loss, but that's the most forgivable loss. Washington, where they should have won the game. They miss a kicker, <laughs> kick at the buzzer. Uh, if they went out here, they're going to be in the playoffs. So Oregon's the one. I wish you text me, Bear. I, I would have gotten down some of that thirty. Is it still thirty-five to one? To me, that's don't, a good number. Guys, don't do. Um, please don't do this. Just I can. Don't, I'll don't, look. Don't, I'll. Don't I'll, I'll, I'll. I'll look. I, I don't know if I have access to that sports book when I when I go to Kansas this week. I, I don't know if they're uh, they're open in, in, in that uh, in that region. But but I but I can. I have some. I have. Yeah, I have Why some. Why are you guys doing this? To, to not, make you angry. This is not. This is not to good. Make, to before Oregon goes on the road as a seven-point favorite. Well, you just said you. You just said you're taking Utah this week anyway. So no, I didn't. I, I, I said taking the under in this game. Oh, you said, I said you're taking. I, you, I would not. You said bet. you're taking you. you take, it, I bet on the Chargers last weekend against the Chiefs, right? Plus five and a half. And it stuck you. as a Chiefs fan to watch that game and like only hope the Chiefs win by one to five points. It's a terrible feeling. I'm not doing that with Oregon this weekend. That was like the first time ever the Chargers. I know. Like, first, we'll, we'll, we'll talk. We'll talk about that on. On the NFL pod, before we go, I guess. Well, well, Sammy, was there anything else out there that you uh, you liked this week? We got any uh, Ivy League total team totals or, <laughs> or, or or anything out there that we can sink our teeth into? Hey, we've been good in the Ivy League this year. Don't even start with me. I know and we have. I, I love, know. On top of my love for Oregon, which just came out of nowhere like three seconds ago. Yeah, I think Oregon's a lock to make the playoff now. Um, I think this Brown team is going to score a bunch of points again. We did them a couple weeks ago on this show. This is Friday night FCS, boys and girls. I know they don't have a graphic for this mm. one. I know the crew is like, wait, what number it's is going that? in the It's going in the um, calendar right now. Friday night FCS. It's Brown Bet and Brown. Pennsylvania. Bet. And if anybody's on this show has been watching the Brown totals from open, like from post until game time, these totals have all no moved like five, six points. So I think the number that's going to open is 52. And if it opens 52, it's not going to last. Wink, wink. Now that doesn't mean it's going to win, but if you're betting these Brown totals, you sicko, you need to bet them early when the number comes up because you're going to miss the move and you don't want to be betting over 55 or over 56 when it opens at 52, that's the magic number. 52 is what we think it's going to be. And we're going to go over in Brown and Penn. What are these a open few weeks day ago up? when we had, I think, yeah. Do you okay. remember the, on the, on the, on the actual gambling group chat, Sammy and bear yep. were going back and forth about yep. the opening line time yep. for this game. A couple of weeks ago there, Sammy had his little number in there, right? Ro rotation number. He had, he's like, it's open up in seven minutes. I'm telling you guys, it opened up 12 oh, minutes later. South Bend. Like, they're, 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 they're betting back and forth. It's like, we're just wait, waiting for like, and finally one, one, one site had it, which was a little higher than, and then the other site put it up at what Sammy thought it was going to be. So it was great. Yeah. And then when I you're trying to, to bet it, I'm the watch, phone I'm like flies out somewhere. of your hand, Bear, because you're so excited. You've been <laughs> yeah. refreshing for 10 minutes, and then it pops. Spin cycle, spin cycle. Out of your hand. <laughs> <laughs> how how yeah. long it, 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 the game ver Verification. I think it's going to be like 2 window? 3 o'clock, Will. I mean, it's okay. a 7 o'clock Eastern kick. They've been waiting until the very last minute, like on the I guess weekend. Oh, so. jeez. Yeah, those games start at like noon Eastern. They'll post them at 10 a.m. So I, I think like. Two, three o'clock Eastern on Friday. So have your phones ready. It's in the it's in the calendar. Alert is set. Bet Brown over fifty two. Two o'clock Eastern on <laughs> tomorrow on Friday afternoon. Uh, this weekend as well. World Series gets underway. The improbable World Series. We could probably spend an hour just dissecting how it's nearly impossible that that Arizona is here. I laid a game and a half with Arizona in the series of plus two forty five. Like they shouldn't wow. be here. I I I I I just think that the stars are aligned for a complete upset Cinderella winner, and I think because I do think it's going to be a short series. I think the fact with the with Gallon and Merrill Kelly at the top, and the emergence of Fott, 
who's given them now a good number. So that's how you pronounce his last yeah, name. Brandon okay. Fott. Yeah. Okay, he was great against the Phillies. Like, I think the top of the rotation favors them because after Montgomery and Evaldi, you, you can't trust Max Scherzer. Like, you, like, you can't throw him. He's, it's batting practice. So Arizona's got, they shouldn't be here. They got no fear. I, I think it's a short series either way. I, I'm going to go with the, uh, the Diamondbacks to, to, to win the World Series, they win their second World Series, unfortunately. And I say unfortunately because I still have wake up in the middle of the night in cold sweats about 2001 when that should have been Alfonso Soriano's moment hitting the home run uh, in game seven and then uh, uh, like zero hard hit balls in the bottom of the inning off of the greatest. Who was the line for that game, Bear? Remember? Mm, I, I I don't. I would I would think, Ar- you, Will, Arizona would have had to have been favored in that game, right? With the pitching matchup? No way. I mean, that was the no, three-time defending seven? champion Yankees, but they were on the road. It's funny. Arizona was probably the better team in like six or seven of those games. I, I, it was probably – it probably wasn't that uh, that that big either way. It was probably close to a point. Pick them. What, Schilling versus Clemens, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was Schilling because I remember Johnson pitched game six and he absolutely steamrolled them. I, I'm, I'm, I'm seven, not yeah. sure I'm wagering the – on the Rangers, but I'm taking the Rangers because my love for Bruce Bochy. Well, we and, love Bruce Bochy and will, we've talked about this on text as well. Like the fact that there's still a place for Bruce Bochy, a manager yeah. like him in today's with all the analytics and stats and just kind of the old school. Hey, you know what? No, I'm Evaldi, Go, go, go get the out. You know, I'm sticking with you. Hang in there. And it worked out. I, if the Rangers win, I will be happy for Bruce Bochy, but will you got, did you plan anything? Not yet. I think I'm leaning towards Rangers in seven is four to one. I just I want to root for a long series. I can't just in my head. I I have to believe it's something sacred, and we can't have a 162 game season where team gets <laughs> outscored for the year and then holds up the trophy at the end. That just doesn't compute with me. The Rangers were at least in first place for pretty much most of the season in the AL West. They were a 91 team, so. Uh, I, I think Texas offense will be hard to deal with. Kelly and Gowan have not been as good on the road. So we haven't had a game seven in the world series, I think 2017. So maybe we get a long series here. I'll take Texas in seven plus 400. Sammy baseball fan. Yes or no. Oh, of course. I was going to take kettle one Marque or uh, Marte rather at uh, nine to one. <laughs> I know he says it could tell, but I'm saying kettle um, because I do love me some kettle. You're a uh, funny think- guy today, Sammy. Look, I look, all I, all I'm saying is I think it's a better bet rather than take the D backs at plus plus one forty five. You could take one of their players to win MVP. Marte is nine to one. Carol's 10 to one. Moreno's 20 to one. Um, and we've seen some long shots win MVP. We saw Jorge Soler win it a couple of years ago. Yes, we did. I, I was waiting for Steve it. Pierce in 2018 won it. We've seen some longer shots because this is not like the con Smythe. It's not the whole postseason. It's just that World Series. And I think there's some great value on those D-back hitters. Oh, yeah, I, I know, Will, Will, you've got it. You should give it to the best player, yeah. It's, it's not Super Bowl MVP either. It's a yeah, good point. Like- well, who was it for the Chiefs that should have won a couple of years ago? Williams, right? Was Williams oh, running back? Running back, yeah, yeah. 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 Williams yeah. instead. Yeah, Damian. Yeah. Sammy, yeah. Sammy mentioned Con Smythe. Well, did you got? Did you get your uh, Connor McDavid, Con Smythe bet in for the Oilers playoff run coming up? This is the Oilers' year, as Bear knows. It's the Clippers' year. Those are his two favorite teams: the Oilers and the Clippers. Yeah, but Clip, Clippers, Oiler, and NBA, NHL championship parlay coming up. It, we all, we all knew, everyone in New York knew that there would be a Marte as the NLCS MVP this year, right? That's right. Had to end, end it on the Mets. On, on the Mets, by the way, who had a better run differential than the team that is in the World Series. Okay. And I think we've exhausted our allotment seven, for today. Arizona six out of seven yeah. times. It's amazing. Yep. Hang, hang the banner. Hang the banner yeah, at Citi right. Field. All right, gents. Until next week, have a good one. Talk soon. Welcome back to the show, Bear. I, I don't know about you, but I, I am going to bet that Brown total now. It, it, Sammy better text us oh, when, I, when I literally typed it into my iCal to, to, to set me an, an alarm for 2 o'clock on, on Friday afternoon to bet it. We should have an over-under of the time it posts. I don't think it's going to be too easy. I think it'll be later. Yeah, probably like 4 you, or you, 5, you, you, six, know the, right? you know the listenership and the viewership of the Bear Bets podcast. It's going to all the, all the Vegas books now are going to be listening and they're going to open it much higher much than it higher. should be now because of yeah. we, we, we kid Sammy about this, by the way, those wagers win, but man. between that and a couple of years ago when Bryant became the 
Oh, oh college basketball? <laughs> the overs and the totals were overs, off. Yeah. The totals were off by like twenty points, yeah. and it was they weren't even close. Yeah. So I'm in on it. All right, I'm in on Bears bets. Let's talk about the wagers Bear has made so far. Before we get to our best bets in just a second, he has North Carolina State under sixteen and a half points against Clemson, Texas minus the seventeen against BYU, and Georgia minus fourteen and a half against Florida Bear. What is your best bet for the weekend? I like Texas State getting six against Troy. And Troy is a team that I've had a couple of times on this show with a really good defense. And the last three games, they've allowed a total of uh, 10 points, which is incredible. But this is going to be a tougher task. This is a Texas State offense. Uh, Former Tulsa quarterback G.J. Kinney is now their head coach. They run a high-powered, explosive offense. The former Auburn and LSU quarterback T.J. Finley is there in San Marcos now. They average over 38 points a game. And you look at their two losses. They lost to UTSA by seven. UTSA is a, a good team. And they lost to Ula Lafayette by four. Like, this is yeah. this is not a team that I think is going to be getting blown out. Like, it feels if Troy escapes with the win, I, yeah. I think it's a one-score game. I don't, I don't think it's going to be easy at all. Texas State looking to get bowl eligible. Um, they got that win over Baylor early in the year. Like, I, I, I think through. people just don't, you look at Texas State and it's like, was that like the Kathy Ireland school and unnecessary, right, whatever that movie was <laughs> like, like, but it's, it's like, they, they're a legitimately good offense and, and Troy's defense is going to be tested. I think yeah. this week quite a bit. So give me the Bobcats plus the six. There's also a chance I think for like a backdoor cover here, right? Because of the, the, the Texas State offense. Like, if, Oh yeah. They, yeah. They're, they're behind the, the throw and move and move and move. So I'm with you here. All right. My best bet. It's going to be Arizona at home plus three and a half against Oregon State. Uh, this is a Pac-12 after dark special. Ranked teams go to die in the desert in the Pac-12 conference late at night. I had played one of those games in, in, in 07. We were ranked, I think, second in the country and lost to Arizona. We lost our quarterback in that game. Unfortunate, but it happens. When Arizona, when Arizona is good, they beat ranked teams at home. 2018, beat ranked Oregon at night. 2017, beat ranked Wazoo at night. 2015, beat uh, ranked Utah at night. It's a place teams go to die. It just is. And Arizona's good this year. They're 4-3. and three. They lost a close game to USC. We should have won. Lost a close game to Washington. They probably should have won. Or it was close enough. Lost to Mississippi State. They probably should have won. They're a good, they're a good football yeah. team. They're much better. Oregon State's good this year, too, but not as good on the road. The toughest road test so far. They lost at Washington State. Yep. That game was close at the end, but wasn't close for a good majority. Both teams off a of bye. I just like Arizona in this game. I think they went outright, but I'll, but I'll take the three and a half points. That 44-6 result against Wazoo a couple weeks ago, like when I saw that, I thought, was, like, it, I'm like, that's got to be wrong. The, they're, they're, they're missed, here's missed. the reason why Arizona is better this year, though. They're 4 and ninth in the country in points per drive on defense. Their defense has gone a lot better. They have invested, you know, Jed Fish came in and said, we're, we're, we're going to fix the offense first. Who's your, who, who's your DC now, do you? You know? I forget who it is because Don Brown left. Yeah. Um, yeah that's what but I'm... Dave, Dave I, I'll find a shout out for them. Uh, we'll we'll get it. But their defense has done so much better. They they invested offense early on. They got obviously Cowing. They have Teratoa McMillan. They went to Nova Fafita now. They have a, a first round left tackle in Jordan Morgan. But defensively, they're playing so much better. They're tackling better. They're covering better. And against Oregon State, very important to be able to stop the run. On the flip side, though, Oregon State has struggled to stop a passing attack at times this season. And Arizona is one of the better ones in in the Pac-12 conference. So um, Johnny Nansen, who was at UCLA. Okay, perfect. Uh, there we go. Got the shout out. The Arizona's defensive. I I think Oregon State. Excuse me. Arizona wins this game. Uh, so I got Arizona plus three and a half. By the way, I, yeah, yeah, I'm sorry for taking you down memory lane here, but I remember we were game day was at the Oregon Arizona State the week game before, yes, the week before when Dixon when Dixon Dixon got hurt, Correct. and then like I remember. Oh, you remember so, the game? Oh, cool. So someone like, like heading into the the Arizona week, like, oh no, he's fine, he's good. Oh, we, oh so. We not to get long in this podcast. No, no, it's no, worth, no, no. I didn't no, see well, so, this is, I well, love these well, stories. Okay, let me okay. So um I we had a locker with four of us. And, and the, it was me, Dennis, and two other players. Um, and two guys were hurt by that time of year. So just me and Dennis together in the, in the locker. They, they were out for the season. We had a bunch of guys hurt besides besides just Dennis. So he gets hurt against Arizona State. We win that game by a couple scores. Yeah. It was it was a, it was a, Arizona State was like six in the country, yeah. too. Rudy Carpenter. Yeah. 
And um, so we head into the Arizona week. It was a Thursday night game against Arizona State. So we had a whole 10 days to repair. And De I walk her next to Dennis. I talk to him all the time. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. I remember in practice that week, we were a zone read team, right? So we always read the defensive end every time that we ran the football. And if the defensive end crashed, Dennis would pull it and run. And we had other options off that. It was a, the simplest of RPO options. It really was run, run option. Um, and that entire week, I remember this because I'll tell you why. Um, we just ran regular inside zone where you hand the ball off and the, the tight ends on the backside yeah. of inside zone just blocks defensive end all week. And I thought to myself at the time, like, it's a little funky. Like, why, why is Dennis not running the football at all in practice? So we get to the game. And our first touchdown is Dennis Dixon running a long touchdown run. The reason why would be is because I messed up, which was rare for me to do from a mental error standpoint, was we got a look that we had done all season long, all practice time, where if the defensive end walks, excuse me, the outside linebacker walks up on the line of scrimmage, I block out on him. Mm -hmm. Dennis pulls the ball and runs where the defensive end yeah. vacates, and he runs in between that gap. So instinctively, in the middle, in the, in the game, I have a tight end next to me. Ed Dixon next to me. Linebacker walks up. I signal Dennis that I'm going to do this. And if you look on the play, the tight end blocks the defensive end this way. I cross the block the line outside linebacker <laughs> this way, and Dennis just runs the ball for a 60-yard touchdown run on a torn ACL. So no one had any idea he was hurt. None whatsoever. Then obviously later in the game, he tears his ACL because with an ACL injury, you can run straight just fine. It's a side to side that, that, that makes it tough. Um, and we were about to go up 15 nothing in that game too. And uh, Derek Jones ball hit him in the chest, popped up in the air, interception. Um, yikes. We were, that was a good Oregon team. We were good that year. Dennis Dixon was going to win the Heisman Trophy and Oregon Trophy. was going to win the national championship. The, the teams, LSU and Ohio State were not as good as, no, uh, as... The fact that Ohio State got into that BCS championship game was a complete joke. So now that I'm sad... You 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 lose you 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 lose to Illinois on your home field in November, and somehow, like every everyone else lost, like that that to that we, 2007 we, was an unbelievable year. Like the the, the West Virginia Pitt result, yeah, 13 nine was, was was the most everyone was fathomable result that I've everyone ever, was number two. Everyone was number two in the in the, in the nation. South Florida was number two at one point. They lost. We were number Kansas, two. Kansas, West Virginia was number, and then yeah, West Virginia was number two. Missouri was number one. Yeah, you know, and, and when we lost the rematch with Oklahoma, everyone at the top of the year. And the next week we went to UCLA, got shut out, sixteen yep. nothing. Which was, was, was Brady Leaf, right? Was it? Well, he got hurt in the first quarter, so we were on a four string quarterback who was a a, a red shirt freshman walk on, and we went wildcat uh, for some of the we lost. I'm trying to remember his name, who the, the 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 quarterback that wound up coming in for Leaf. Well, the one that it was, it was Cody Kemp originally, and then Nate, Justin Roper played our ball. Justin game. Roper, yes, and you won the ball game, fifty nine to like twenty four. Was it Ch Chip Kelly's best coach game? We we had a ball game with a fifth string quarterback, a walk on freshman quarterback. We scored forty fifty nine points. I think it was Sun Bowl, 50, right? Oh yeah, Sun Bowl, South Florida. Yeah. That was so much fun. All right, I've had so much fun in this bear, reminiscing about Oregon's what if seasons, well, and you mushed us by betting on them to win the championship too. It's been, hey, it's been a rough Oregon. I, I, I bet me. the number, damn it. I know. 35 to one's a good number. How about Kyle Whittingham very quickly? I know we're going long. No, I don't go. No, there's no time limit. This Kyle, is Kyle, Kyle Whittingham time. needs to get the attention and love he deserves. And he's, I, he is, Utah is out. Not only their quarterback, both tight ends, eight running backs, four defensive players. They just lost a middle linebacker. Their best safety did not play the first half of the USC game. Their other safety is their running back now. And all they do is smash people in the face and win football games. Yep. Unbelievable. Man. It is. It's crazy. You should win coach of the year. Speaking of winning football games, North Carolina did not win a football game last no. week. No. They got they got our they got our guy Scott. Even though the Seahawks didn't make him sweat yes. a little bit. Yes. But old 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 Matt, old Matt got him last we week. We debuted last week. Show us your slip. And we had a slip shown last week that had a, a 16 parlay. And North Carolina cost our man, yep. Scott, a 16 parlay. So we're back this week. Now Go to go to our go to our Twitter at Bear Bets Podcast. We ask this question each week. He wants to show us your bets for the week. Nathan Moore at NM underscore fifty one underscore. Say so took Florida State plus seven hundred to win it all. And Oregon plus two ten to win the Pac twelve. Thoughts on those futures? Um, and he took the over in Wyoming and Boise State this weekend. Florida State plus seven hundred to win it all. I think it's a good wager. It is because you you would think that they have the best chance of all these power five teams to finish the season undefeated based on who they have left in the regular season and uh, in the, in potentially the ACC title game. I like the Oregon plus two ten to win the PAC 12 yeah. a lot. I'm, I'm tired of talking about Oregon. Futures. No, I mean, I feel be, like this, we're just, we're just mushing. My but team no, right we, 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 we said this, 
We, we, we said this for a couple of weeks now. Coming out of the Oregon-Washington game, I said if they do rematch Nathan, like, like you said, in the Pac-12 title game, I, I think well, they, they're going to be favored. On yeah, the plus field. 210. If you think they're going to be there, then plus 210 now is a great way. Yes. You won't get plus 210 on game time, basically. Right, and, you can, and, and I think Texas moving forward would beat Oklahoma in a rematch of the Big 12 title game. I, 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 I like your, uh, I like both of those futures, the, Nathan. The I, can't, I, I, I got no feel on Wyoming-Boise this week. The though. Florida State is interesting because if you look at what wins championships, it's a lot of times it's your pass rush, which Florida State has, mm-hmm. and the ability to make big plays on offense, which mm-hmm. Florida State has as well. Like they're they're not a bad wager to to, to no. play them because I think they have the things that help you win championship football games. I agree, and we'll we'll, we'll see that you got. We'll see what Miami's like in a couple weeks when they play them. They still play the Gators, and oh, yeah. we'll see if North Carolina can rally from the. Uh, the embarrassing loss to maybe get to the ACC title game. Five Virginia. Yeah. Oh, I, I, yikes. Great, great story with, with, with the kid who scored the t- coming off of the tragedy last year, but it's an inexcusable, unfathomable loss Can't do that. for the, uh, for Mac Brown and the Tar Heels. So that's it. That's it. Another week in the book, in the books, big noon kickoff for Saints Bear Bets. We'll uh, hopefully have some winners this week. Group chat was always fun. Appreciate the reviewing, the subscribing, the rating, all of it for consuming your, our podcast on wherever you get your podcast. So appreciate Sammy P and Will's time as always. Appreciate your time and the, the trip down memory lane from their time in Eugene. <laughs> and remember, the less you bet, the more you lose when you win. <laughs>